Welcome to Paul's Yard Talk for the month of September. It's um, still in the dry season, but we've had, at the end of August, we've had pretty heavy rain. So if I look out here on the, you know, on the yard, I've actually, right here in front of me, I've actually got to <coughs> mow the lawn, <coughs> which I really didn't have to do since the dry season started. We had uh, two days of really heavy rain. Um, we had thunderstorms, which we typically only get once or twice a year here. And so anyway, this is our my, this is episode number three. We'll just kind of do uh, the yard walk and talk. Thought so we'd start with this little guy right here. This is a manzanita. Uh, I just planted him just recently. I used my plant bucks at Valley Nursery <laughs> and uh, picked up a few extra plants. Um, right now he's only a couple feet tall. Uh, but um, this this shrub will grow probably six feet tall or more, and maybe six feet across. So if I picked a good spot with makes him happy here in the sun, um, if the soil's drained well enough, if everything goes right, then this will be a nice huge shrub. There's two kinds of manzanitas that are native uh, to the northwest. One of them is a hairy manzanita, which is very similar. This one's called a sunset. It's a little different variety, but it's basically the same thing as this. And they'll get, they'll get big. Uh, they get little flowers in the spring. You can see there's actually some new growth on this guy coming right, right there with a little color. The other manzanita, oddly enough, is a what's also known as knick-knick, which is a low-growing ground cover. Let's walk up the hill. So here, here amongst you. some dead grass here, um, there's some knick-knick, and this is a low-growing ground cover. It's also a manzanita, oddly enough. It's the other, the, one of the two native manzanitas in the northwest. The uh, knick-knick is native to large swaths of the Rockies in the, the western U.S., I know. Um, it's, a, it's a ground cover in the Black Hills of South Dakota, my old stomping grounds during my college years. Um, it's a ground cover there where it grows under the uh, ponderosa pines, which are the native dominant evergreen there in the Black Hills. Here, it, here it's kind of growing. I've got it kind of on a sunny, a little bit of a sunny, dry slope here. Um, seems to like it, except that it's easy, it's easy for it to get crowded out by this other stuff. These leaves here, this is a sal owl. Um, I'm going to go to the side yard in a minute and we'll see some sal owl berries. But before we do that, this fern right here, um, this was a volunteer fern. It started growing here in this, right in this spot a number of years ago and I just left it go and I mowed around it when I do mow up here a couple times a year. Um, I don't remember what kind of fern this is. Uh, I don't know for sure, but it's one of the one of the few kinds that we have here, and it spreads by rhizomes clearly because it started off as a single fern, and now it's spread uh, across this little patch here. So it's spreading, and it dies back in the winter. It comes up in the spring. Normally, this time of year, it would be a brown, like that we see here. Some of this, some of this right here is brown because it it gets some hot afternoon sun up here on this hillside, and it hasn't didn't normally doesn't get any rain in the summer. But with that heavy rain we had, that I spoke about a few days ago, it's actually started to green up a little bit already. So, but anyway, this is just a a volunteer native fern that I've just sort of let go, let go up here on this spot. Happen to see some little fall bloomers up here. These are little fall blooming, coming out early this year. Fall blooming. Uh, I don't know if they're crocuses, but they're probably in the crocus, closely related. There's a few of those little little guys coming up here in the lawn. It's right next to a plant that gets fragrant flowers in the spring. I forget what this was, but I planted this up here. I picked it up in the store as one of those impulse buys. I picked it up uh, just because it was fragrant. And there's a little bit of 
little bit of fragrance to the leaves. And I wish I could remember what it was. Okay, I remembered. It's a spice bush. It's called the Venus spice bush. And it will possibly get up to six to ten feet tall eventually. It's probably well, if I go to this very top little branch here, it might be five feet tall right now. So it's getting there. This is Salal. Uh it's a native ground cover. It um has waxy, waxy leaves, uh kind of tough tough branches. It'll grow a foot or two tall. In some places in the backwoods, it'll it'll grow up to maybe three foot tall. The thing about it is that it likes, um, it survives in dry shade. So the shade under the Doug fir trees, it, it can grow in that. And this little patch, it also gets berries. Here's some. That chirping noise is a Doug squirrel. I don't know if you can hear it. But it gets these little uh, dark purple um, salal berries, which again, these are the ones that uh, the uh, natives used to use. They're okay. They're not the tastiest thing in the world, but they're not bad. Um, I've eaten them before. They're, they're okay. And they're good. They mix them with think different berries and make kind of a pemmican. Mix them with maybe some smoked salmon or something. And they're pretty good, but it's um, it's a native plant. It grows from rhizomes. It grows fairly slowly, but it'll it'll crowd out most stuff in a dry shade. It takes over and uh, up here along the well front there. of the house. These are the columbines that um, they're perennials. They keep coming back here, and there's some new un new growth for next year. I actually started down here, but I need to cut. I haven't cut these back yet, but these are the. Uh, stalks. These are seed pods. There's little tiny black seeds in some of these where they haven't already fallen out. Um, but I'll cut those back and put them in the compost bin here. Maybe I'll get around to doing that today. That might be something to do today. But anyway, that's what those are. Those are the seed pod heads from the columbines. This is a new... I actually got three of these little guys. They're brand new. They're, they're Pernietia, which I have never heard of before. They're an evergreen, little evergreen shrub. I put three of them here in this bed. So we'll uh, we'll check back in maybe in a future episode see how they're doing. They're going to get some little flowers eventually and they're going to have some nice foliage and bark year-round. So it's a year-round interest plant. Here we've got a heather, a heather or a heath. Not sure which. I always get those two mixed up. But this, they usually, many of the varieties bloom in the winter, um, early spring time sometimes too. Here we've got one blooming in the late summer, early fall. But they're very pretty and they give some nice winter color usually to the garden. This one, and then this one, there's one, this one's got full bloom pretty much right now it looks like. And then right next to it up here, there's another one which I think is past, or maybe it hasn't quite bloomed yet. This one's got more whitish, whitish blooms. It hasn't come out yet. Um, this ground cover here is a Cotani aster. It's a, a low-growing Cotani aster. It gets uh, nice berries. There's some orangish berries there you can see, I think. And uh, it spreads pretty <laughs> rampantly, so I'll need to come down here and cut it back sometimes. But this just started from a single one or two, maybe three individual plantings, and it spreads by running along the ground and then anchoring itself, rooting itself basically. You can see it's pretty much covered up my my rock wall. I'd stop by this thing for a minute. It, um, this has some nice color this time of year. Some of the leaves, which are normally this dark, this dark color, the newer leaves have some lighter colored variation, variegation on them. And also it gets a number of little red berries, which are kind of pretty. On the downside, this thing has got the nastiest thorns, this side of uh, Himalayan blackberries. Um, and it's getting pretty big here, so I need to uh, think about it. At one time I thought about digging it out, but boy, that would be a, a job. <laughs> so I think maybe I'll just keep it trimmed back so it doesn't take over. I've got some little ornamental dwarf uh, evergreens right here next to it. So I'll have to keep it trimmed back or it'll it'll take those over. I'll look up what the name of this is and then I'll put it in the 
in the notes at the bottom of the screen. I thought I'd close today back at this arbor, which has actually has two clematis growing on it. One of the clematis is a uh, early bloomer. It blooms very early in the in the spring, and it uh, it's the kind of clem there's different kinds of clematis, and the, the, it's a kind that you don't cut back. You know, you can trim it to keep it in bounds, but but you uh, it loses its leaves, but it but it just grows on the old old growth and just keeps coming back year after year. Now planting on the other side of it, this is an evergreen clematis, which um, does pretty well here except on our coldest, when the, if we get a cold snap where the temperature might get down to 20 or something, then it actually loses its leaves and it doesn't like that. But it's doing pretty good and it's growing all the way up and over and I see right here it's going to start to bloom. It's blooming up here on top. Um, those are all little flower buds there and it's going to have little pretty white, there's a spider there too, it's going to get little pretty white flowers. I don't think any of them are open yet but I'll try to capture some when I get a chance. Um, but this is just going to be covered with white. You can see all this little green. There goes the spider. I don't know if you can see it. Um, just covered with little green little green buds. This is going to just be covered with little white flowers here in the next couple of weeks. So, that's our, oh, while we're here, this is, this is, this is the yard walk kind of thing. This, uh, here's, this is a second crop of, um, figs just coming. Those two little guys there are second crop figs. Uh, in a good year we can get two crops here, but whether those will be ripe before we get our first frost this fall, uh, it'll be a race. I don't know if we'll get a second crop or not. But anyway, so here we are. Um, still in the dry season, even though, like I said, we've had some rain. I don't know if you can tell looking through the camera, but there's grass is starting to green up a little bit because of all the rain we had. It really rained hard here. Um, and that's it for this month, and we'll see you on the next Paul Yard Walk and Talk.